You can go out into a woodland or a grassland and there could be no fungi at all. You can go the next day and there are these huge mushrooms that have appeared overnight. When you're walking through a field like this and you see the scarlet wax cap, for example, bright red, or you see the crimson wax cap, which is a really big one and it's got these kind of blood colours to it. It's amazing the population here. And when you see that, you just stop dead in your tracks. It is absolutely stunning. I'm Steve Hindle and I'm the Ancient Grassland Project Officer at the National Trust. The Ancient Grassland Project seeks to identify and help to conserve sites with a very rare community of fungi. It's been running for the past three years and during that time I've looked at 500 hectares of land across Calderdale. So I found two endangered species, 32 vulnerable species, 126 different check species in total. Each one of those letters stands for a group of, of fungi and many of those are very rare or new to England, new to science, new to the country. To put this in context, an endangered species that you might have heard of would be uh, a polar bear, a vulnerable species would be something like the snow leopard. So we know that these species are declining, that they are threatened with extinction, and the reason for this is habitat loss. The South Pennines are known to be really important for the grassland fungi. Uh, with species that are not found anywhere else in, in, in Britain and in Europe and in the world indeed. So really they're, they're, they're integral to the, the functioning of the grassland ecosystem. So it's not just the obvious things like the plants and the insects that, that feed on them, but the fungi themselves, you know, they, they, they spread throughout the grasslands, they're all tied together, they've got special relationships with particular insects on particular plants. So the whole function of the grassland is much richer when you've, got, when you've got a healthy population of grassland fungi. It's become common knowledge now that fungi play a really important role in ecology. And I think people are quite aware that in the woodlands, we've got all of these mycorrhizal relationships. We've got these fungi which are attached to and connected to trees, providing nutrients which the trees otherwise wouldn't be able to access. That same thing is going on in grasslands. So these fungi, which are known as the Chegd fungi, they've not been disturbed for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe millennia. So Calderdale is an amazing place for these Chegd fungi. And one of the reasons is because of the topography. So we've got this, this area which has got poor soil, steep fields, lots of stones in the fields, but then we've also got a lot of rain. Then we've got these steep sided valleys. They've got moorland on the top, so we've got these flat tops. The rain comes down onto the tops and then it's seeping slowly through these valleys. So we've got constant movement of water and good drainage. And that's exactly what these fungi like. On a general scale across this area, the farmers don't have an intensive grazing and that enables plants and fungi to thrive. So the cattle and the horses, they, they tend to graze more focused on the grasses and less on the flowers and the sheep just kind of graze everything. Ideally, it's the cattle grazed areas which support the, the greatest range of fungi, but it's the sheep grazed areas where you find the most because that's where you can see them. Back in the 50s, we had this agricultural revolution, the green revolution, and so many fields then were improved. They were ploughed, they were fertilised, and we got much more production, and we were much more able to feed ourselves, the population of the country. But then we lost the fungi from those fields. Ancient 
grassland habitats are really, really important. They're quite a poorly understood habitat, but they're absolutely crucial from a biodiversity perspective, but also from a soil carbon, a general soil health, a water quality perspective. They're really, really important. So some of the ancient grassland habitats that we've looked at through the project can on the face of it seem like not particularly interesting habitats. They sometimes just look like kind of empty fields, but actually when you drill down and look into the detail, they're incredibly rich and incredibly diverse, not only on the surface, but also in the soils. Um, so they're really, really important habitats in terms of biodiversity and they cannot be replaced. That's the crucial thing about them. You can't replace an ancient grassland once it's gone. Um, so in comparison with things like new plant, new woodland planting schemes or meadow creation, actually we've got these incredible diverse functioning habitats there already and we need to protect them. These grasslands are carbon rich, so they have for centuries, millennia, been capturing carbon and that carbon is stable and so this carbon can't get out. But if we change the management, so if we change the grazing, if we allow trees to come in, particularly if we plant trees and open the soil to do that, then that leads to a change in the ecosystem which leads to a massive release of carbon because all of the systems that are there break down as they're replaced by new forming systems. So from a carbon perspective it's really really important that we conserve these grassland soils. Tree planting has got a very important role to play in carbon capture but research says that if you were to plant trees into an environment like this you're looking at 50 years before you get to carbon neutral. Projects like the Ancient Grasslands project mean that we're planting the right tree in the right place for the right reason and protecting areas that are actually really important already. Many species and habitats within the UK which are threatened in some way, have legal protections. When it comes to the Czech D fungi, there are really very, very few protections. If you wanted to change the use of, of a field like this, for example, if you wanted to do some rewilding, which sounds like a great idea, but if you were to do it on this field, you would lose a lot of the current status of this field to other types of habitat. And so therefore, those fungal habitats would be lost. Hardcastle Crags is actually an amazing site for fungi. We've got all of this woodland and we've got lots of different tree species in those woods and so that supports loads of different fungal species. But the grasslands, there isn't any public access. So if you do want to find these fungi, then you need to get out in the fields. So go out on the public footpaths during the autumn. Just look around and you'll start to find them. You might need to look quite close to the ground because some of them are small, but then you also might just see a field just full of golden and red. You can get a great swathe of them across the hill. I absolutely love stumbling across an ancient grassland and something that might earlier in the year have been quite a quite a dull bland grassland when you come in fungi season and it's absolutely full of weird and wonderful fungi that are all sorts of different colours and shapes. Every step you take it gets more and more exciting. If they disappear we're losing an one element of, of the ecosystem. They're, they're really special. They're just integral to, to the functioning of, of these ancient grasslands. These fungi are an indicator of a kind of grassland which is very threatened. There are many other species which we could find in these grasslands within the soil which may not even be known yet to science but could be going extinct before we even know it. I've been really impressed with the National Trust's Ancient Grassland Project. It's been really important in the way that it's gathered more information about these special places.